everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be filming Rover vs. WAG. I've been doing Rover and WAG for about a year and a half now. So I have experience in it now. It's my little side hustle that I do. It's a good way to earn like a little bit of cash on the side and it's helped a lot with medical stuff with my injury. I just want to go over some tips and some advice as a walker and some advice as like a pet owner if you're looking into one of these two services. For WAG, you have to take like a little mini how well do you know animals and how good are you with animals and kind of just like things that you would notice about animals like if the dog does this then what do you do um, kind of questions and then the, there's maybe about like 15 of those after that you write out your own little personal get to know me so that way the pet owners can kind of read that there is a background check you have to pay for that yourself I think it's like $25 and then $35 is like the premium background check and they like recommend that you do that one I think I just got the $25 one and I've done pretty well on it and it didn't like slow my recommendations down or anything and then if you like want to buy a wag shirt I thought I had to wear that like on each walk so I was like okay I guess I should buy it but I don't wear it on each walk and then you have to provide pictures of yourself for WAG. They kind of request for you to take pictures outside. I had a picture taken of me outside because they did recommend that you were outside and that it was kind of close to your face so that way they could see your face and that it was bright and very clear. So I just did that really quickly. I uploaded like two photos, two of my favorite ones, and then that was pretty much it. Honestly, it wasn't that hard at all. If you're like low on cash, then maybe paying for your own background check would suck a little bit. It takes about two to three weeks for you to get like approved and everything. I want to say it didn't take that long for mine, but I would give yourself about two to three weeks just in case it takes a little bit on the longer side. After you get approved as a walker, there's a separate app that you download that is for the walkers. Not everyone has access to that. If you're a pet owner, you will only have access to just the general WAG app. Once you're approved and everything, they'll email you a link to download the separate app for walkers. You can't get that in the app store. For Rover, the way it works is pretty much the same way, but the difference with Rover to WAG is you need testimonials. Just be aware of that, that if you're trying to kind of get hired right away, you will need testimonials. So however long it takes for whoever you're asking for, for their testimonial, just take that into account how long it'll take to get their testimonial in. And then once they receive that, then the two to three weeks start for the hiring process and for being approved. And then pictures as well. I just honestly, I just use the same pictures from WAG to Rover. You have to write a little bit longer of an about me section than you do on WAG. WAG is a little bit shorter. That's pretty much the hiring process. Most of it was online. I never spoke to anyone on the phone. I think it's mostly just the background check. Your background check, I would assume, has to be pretty much spotless to work for these companies because you are going into people's homes. WAG is kind of like an Uber for dogs, so basically, what happens is for WAG you kind of put like a 10 mile radius that's the highest radius that you can set for your account then it'll send you notifications for like six miles away five miles away sometimes those are way too far but you can kind of plan out your day if they send those notifications out early enough you can kind of like oh if I have an errand to run I can go at this time I'll be on that side of town they'll send out a notification and it's kind of sent to just like everyone in the app who are walkers. I've never received like a personal request. I know there's an option for like service requests. I've never received those. Even when I was going to like normal clients daily, I didn't ever receive those and I couldn't figure out how to, but I was doing them enough that it worked out really well, so it was fine. And you kind of get your normal dog walks, the ones you're used to seeing. And the only thing that kind of sucks is they didn't set it up like daily you kind of just were like okay I, there's usually this little Yorkie that pops up at like 9 30 in the morning I hope she pops up again tomorrow um, because after the gym I'll you know run over there and walk her really quick or let her out I wish it was a little bit more uh, planned out on that end so the only things you get to see before you even get to request that the walk is how far away it is the name of the dog the time that you need to be there to walk the dog and how long to walk the dog before you request it, you can kind of see the area that it's in, but you don't know exactly where it is. After you click request, you just wait for them to respond to you. 
you don't hear back from the actual pet parent themselves. You just get a notification from WAG that either you got accepted or your request was canceled because somebody else just got it before you. That's usually what I've learned that happens. It's not necessarily that they didn't choose you. One of my aunts was on WAG for a little bit. I asked her like, do you get to pick who you want to walk with your dogs? And she was like, no. It's just whoever they assign me to, basically. So that's something to be aware of. It's kind of first come, first serve on WAG. It's not where they're reaching out to you directly. And on Rover, it works more planned out. They reach out to you directly. You don't get to see like who the pet owners are and everything like that. Like They'll message you, and they see your profile. And you don't see who you would have possible clients as or anything. The pet parents will reach out to you if they're close to you. I've spoken to some of the pet parents like, hey, what do you see on your end? One of them told me that they don't actually see where I live, so that's good, but she saw in the area that I was in, so she liked how close I was. But that's all they can see on their end, and that was one of the questions I did ask her. Rover's slow on that end because they're reaching out to you. They have to go look to see who they want and I guess if you're not like on the first page and if there's a lot of walkers in your area to choose from who have more ratings than you or more stars just because maybe they've walked dogs longer or whatever, they might choose those people first. Rover is a little bit better for high maintenance dogs like if your dog is older or has you know allergy problems it's best to do Rover on that end if you're a pet parent because you can specify a little bit more before you select someone and you can kind of choose who you want for your animal and for your baby because Rover you, you as a pet parent get to choose more specifically if you were to go through WAG and you have a special baby that you have a lot more requirements for your dog walker WAG wouldn't be the best one because it's kind of just going out to whoever. You don't get to tell them beforehand. Wag is more for, hey, just go let my dog out really quick, take him out for a quick little walk. Whereas Rover is more specified in the sense of like, hey, can you give them this medicine? Or if there's more things to discuss, I think Rover is better for that. There was one dog that I had to change its diaper and like, those are things you have to take into consideration. Like to specify beforehand and WAG, they don't tell you that until like after you've requested it. So if you get selected and you didn't know that you were gonna have to change a diaper, then you're just going into this like, wait, I didn't want this responsibility. You don't know that going in, you only know that after you did the walk and then you have like notes that the walkers will leave each other. But we can see them to each other like, hey, walk in through this door. But for the most part, all the experiences I've had with WAG have been great. The pet parents have left like, what to do, but it would be nice to somehow know that you would have kind of a little bit more to do. The WAG offers dog boarding, dog sitting, dog walking, and drop-in visits. Like if the dog owner has a backyard and they're just in a house, they don't really want you to take the dog for a walk, but they need you to let it out of its crate. You just kind of let it out and you drop in and you just give them some water or whatever they specify. It'll specify before you request, whether it's a drop-in visit, a dog walk, a dog sitting, or dog boarding. Uh, WAG is pretty much only for dogs, not for any other animal. Rover offer, offers pretty much the same thing. There's also like a doggy daycare where they just drop them off and it's for the daytime. Rover's for dogs and cats, whereas WAG's for only dogs. Just keep that in mind if you like cats or if you don't, then you can specify that in your profile. For a 20 minute walk on WAG, they charge $15. And for a 30 minute walk, they charge $20 and for a 60 minute walk they charge $30. If you were to do pet sitting or pet boarding there's more details that you have to put in before you know how much it would be. I can't tell you off the bat like how much that would be for you but for the walks they're pretty much standard 20 minutes, 30 minutes, or an hour. But you can't do any less than 20 and you can't do any more than an hour. For Rover you can set your own prices. I kind of based it off of WAG as a walker. For a 30 minute walk you could charge $20 but you're competing with other walkers who are going to charge possibly less than $20 for a 30 minute walk so if you're wanting to gain clients it's best to do your research a little bit and kind of compare before you overcharge also know your worth but don't overcharge in the beginning when you're trying to gain clients because they're looking for the best deal keep in mind the percentages that are taken from WAG and Rover a percentage is taken out from my earnings because I'm doing it through the company so they're getting their percentage and then I'm getting mine and there is no set pricing for Rover. You get to set that as a walker yourself, whereas WAG, it's already set and you can't change it at all. 
So WAG takes out 40% of what you earn as a walker. If you were a parent watching this video, just know that as walkers, we don't get the entire amount that you're paying. If you can, please tip your walkers. You're not required to tip on WAG, but we definitely appreciate it. The payment period is seven days. I think it was every Tuesday to Tuesday. We get our deposit sent, so you don't get it right into your bank account right after one walk and you can choose like where you want it to go basically like any other direct deposit like you could choose what bank account and you do have to set that up it's not very hard and you can do that through the app Rover takes 20% of our earnings so on Rover it's a 48 hour payment processing period before your payment is available so it doesn't take seven days but it's not available the day that you're done with the services um, so the only thing with Rover is you can only select two ways of receiving your payment. You can only select PayPal or a check by mail. That's it. So I just did that and then through PayPal, you can do it to a direct deposit. You don't have to wait for a check. Just the walkers that has been accepted can see your address and then can get the code to get into the lockbox to get the key to get into your home. WAG does that and pretty much Rover does the same thing, but it's more of a meet and greet with Rover that you meet the family first for the most part and then they'll give you the key or you kind of work something out like that. On WAG, after you walk the dog or do whatever service you provided, you have to send in a report card on the app to complete the service. You kind of put like a check mark and check each one. If they peed, if they pooped, if you lock the door, it'll automatically show the amount of time that you walk the dog and the distance in which you walk and it shows where you've walked and for how long. Some of the pros for each one would be there's the pet insurance, 24-7 contact number, but definitely like check to see what's covered on the insurance for either one. You can definitely like start and stop whenever you want for each one, so that's one of the pros. Like if you're kind of busy and you really don't have time, you can just like say that you're not available and then you don't have to like accept every walk on WAG. It is whenever you're available. You don't have to like quit at a certain time and be like, I'm no longer a dog walker if you're really busy or you found a new job or something came up, you don't have to quit entirely, you just don't accept any more dog walks at that time. You get to kind of start up whenever you're ready again. So that's kind of cool. You're always there, you don't have to renew anything, there's no membership to renew as a walker. Once you're hired, you're hired, there's no quitting. Unless you like never are walking dogs again and you want to delete your profiles, then you can do that, but you can always leave it available. For Rover, ask good questions beforehand at the meet and greet because you can do a meet and greet before you decided to either sit the dog or board the dog. Go prepared with your list of questions that you have because they might think that they're feeling you out and like trying to see how you work. But also remember that as a walker, you're checking out their dog, whether you want to take care of their dog. It's not just them interviewing you. You're also interviewing them and you're interviewing the dog. And trust your gut. Don't go into something with like a weird feeling. Get good pictures for your profile if you can. I don't have too many. Um, I just built up my pictures like in my gallery on my WAG profile. Like just whenever I'd walk dogs, I did a little bit extra. Like I'd send a funny video or whatever was happening. That way they could see like what happened and like how it went. I give them an emergency contact for me and I give my emergency contact the pet parent's number just in case something happens on both ends. You never know. Honestly, I would do both. If you can do both, I would. If you can afford to pay for the background check on both of them, I would definitely apply for both of them because you have more of a chance of reaching more clients through both. And through Rover, they're able to see you, like I said. It's a little bit more personal on Rover. I really liked both of them. I've had a little bit of some weird funky experiences with WAG more so than Rover, but trust your gut with the locations that you're going to. Even if you're driving there and you don't feel safe, don't go in, call WAG and let them know what's going on. They've been great customer service wise whenever something weird has happened with the location. Hopefully they get better at tracking those scammers or I don't know what's happened with those but I've definitely been sent to some weird locations where I don't even get out of my car because I'm like, this isn't even a place. They just ask for a picture to verify where you're at. Never give any information on your own. The only thing they'll ask for is your email address, but they never ask for your password. So if you call someone that is asking for your password, that is not the right place to go. Definitely hang up. Don't give them any more information. They'll pay you for the inconvenience of you going out with your gas in your car and you not even walking a dog because something happened. They don't just leave you with no money earned on that when you did go take the time to go see where the walk was and everything. So they've been great 
on that end. But yeah, I would definitely recommend doing both because you're getting your name out there on Rover for people to contact you and with WAG you're getting your name out there when you are going out for walks and things like that. Like I've gotten so many clients through WAG and going to one specific apartment building and from there running into the pet parents after I've walked their dog and they're like, hey, like, would you like to walk my dog more frequently and more scheduled? And I'm like, heck yeah, let's do that. And then we end up doing it off the app because now they get to pay less than what they're paying through the app and I get to earn more than I was earning through the app. So they're paying less and I'm earning more. It works out really well. They have someone that they trust. It's not a bunch of people coming in and out. So it works really well. And from there, especially in apartment buildings, it's so great because word of mouth, you're able to get out there, you know, a hustle and talk about yourself and what you're doing. I usually like to let them know like, hey, this is just my side hustle for as long as I'm injured. After that, I'm not gonna be like available as often. So I just wanna let you know that this isn't permanent. And then they're always like, oh yeah, of course. But they like knowing who I am and definitely I'm sure like, they would rather have someone they know than just like random people in and out, in and out, in and out through WAG. I really like once I've gotten my clients, then I can schedule them and you know, you have a schedule and you can say, hey, can I come an hour earlier, an hour later? And you can adjust y'all's schedules accordingly. Unlike WAG, you get that time and that's it. I've done my dog sittings off of Rover. I get the contacts. I don't know if this is wrong, but this is what I end up doing. You get your networking and your connections and then you say, peace out app. I just love that you get to schedule it more than you would with the apps. I still brought some of those things that I've learned from the apps, like the report card. I do that after my walks. Sometimes I'll send a video or a picture just the way I would with WAG and I do that on my own with my clients that I've taken on on my own. Still do those things because I think it helps them feel safe knowing that you went and like you didn't forget and you were there and kind of what happened that day. It is very much the honor system once you go off the app because they can't track you. But just be honest, you're there for the dog and the owners might be busy the entire day and that's the only time they get to go outside. Yeah, that's all I have today. Leave a comment down below if you've tried WAG or Rover and which one you you prefer if you would try them at all. If you like this video give it a thumbs up down below and if you like my videos subscribe I would really appreciate it. I'll see you on the next video. Bye guys!